everybody, this is Jason with Lone Star Catfish. So it's been quite a while since I um, put any kind of video together. There's a couple of reasons for that. Uh, the biggest of which is just the fishing has just been awful. I mean, I haven't been able to catch any fish in a really long time. And I got to the point where uh, I'd go out, I wouldn't even bother taking my, my camera. Um, and you know, I, I catch some fish here and there, but nothing ever worth putting any kind of video together. So over the last month, one of the things I decided to do was finally bike a bull and put a trolling motor on the big boat here. Um, there's just some things I want to do out on the lake that I just can't do without a trolling motor. You know, I can only drift so much with the wind or the currents, um, you know, constantly not drifting where I want to, you know, anchors and throwing those out and dealing with them um, is a pain in the butt. And then of course my power poles are great, but that's only going to work in the shallow water. So um, I actually went out uh, about a month or so ago now, and I, it was at night, the wind was down. I was able to do some really nice drift fishing across some spots. Um, and now I didn't catch any fish, there's reasons for that, some good stories there. But um, essentially what I found, a lot of great signals, but I thought, man, if I could come out and do this type of thing, where I'm controlling myself over spots, over structure, and be able to hold those spots, um, without the wind pushing me this way or, or, or the anchors pulling me that way, I thought I, I really felt like I could expand it. And if nothing else, I have no more excuses right, for not catching fish. So um, so I, I, I got a Minn Kota Tarova 80 pound thrust, 24 volt, 60 inch shaft trolling motor. Um, and of course all the stuff that goes with that, the batteries and the chargers and um, receptacles and all that stuff. And so I've spent really the last two weeks putting this on uh, and it took me two weeks because uh, of a, a bracket um, that, that was the wrong size, and I'll, I'll talk about that here in a second. But here's just a quick video of, of uh, this is not of me putting it on because you wouldn't have wanted to see that because um, it, was, it was quite embarrassing or I wouldn't want you to see that. Uh, but this is uh, just a quick video on the finished product and what I did. Uh, the boat is a, a Nautic Star 210 DC. Um, again, not exactly a, um, your go-to fishing vessel, but you know, I bought this boat originally as sort of a compromise kind of family cruiser, skiing, tubing, but also Jason gets to go fish um, when he wants to. Um, that was about six or seven years ago. My family, my, my kids mainly have gotten older. My family is less interested in doing that. And so I've basically taken it over now and it's a fishing boat, you know, power poles, rod holders, now a trolling motor. Um, so. You know, I'm, I'm making the most out of this boat. I do love this boat. It's nice. My wife likes to come out and relax. I've had days where I come out, I throw lines in the water, and I lay down. I've just got some nice, you know, uh, cushioned areas. Lay down and just take a nap while you're waiting for fish to bite. So I do love the boat. Um, and, uh, but, and the trolling motor fits well on here, but you'll see, uh, and I'll walk through here, you know, some of the things I had to work around. Um, but, but all in all, I didn't really have to make any compromises. It, I think it fits well. Uh, and I'm looking forward to getting out uh, and giving it a try. So I uh, hope you enjoy this video. All right, so after four days uh, over about, I guess, two weeks, um, you know, two weekends at least, I finally got this <laughs> trolling motor installed. Uh, a couple hiccups here and there. It really had to do with the brackets that I had or the bracket that I had for the trolling motor. That was the biggest thing. Um, I had to send back what I had ordered and um, just because just it wasn't long enough, it was a good bracket, but I had to get a longer one. Uh, and I'll show that to you in a second. But I've got everything uh, installed now, so I'll just kind of do a quick walkthrough uh, of what I got. So the first thing I got here is uh, my Hummingbird. So this is just a Helix 5 Chirp. I know I'm, I'm backlit there. Um, so let's get some light on it. Um, so this is just you know a Hummingbird Helix 5. Uh, it's just uh, sonar only, chirp. I didn't get the side imaging or the down imaging. I didn't want anything complicated. So just real simple. I've got that mounted on, uh, this is a ram mount. So you can see I've got it mounted to the rail here. Um, and that just can come, uh, come undone real easily. And then it's mounted up here. And that was just, a, you know, again, a hummingbird um, adapter for the ram mounts. Um, the power, as you can see right there, runs down to these outlets that I installed, so these uh, receptacles that I installed here on the boat. Let's, let's get down there closer. 
All right, so, so these two receptacles are what I installed. So this one here, there actually used to be a receptacle right here for the trolling motor a, or a trolling motor that originally came with the boat. Um, so I took that out and I, I put this one in there. I probably could have used the old one, but I just wanted something new um, and put that one in there. And that's what is running to the hummingbird. You can see, you know, there's a pretty big step down of, of wire gauge that goes from right here. Uh, up to the hummingbird wire, but I, I put heat shrink on all of it, and then I put this little flex hose on it just to keep it all nice and tidy. And then this runs back to my main accessory battery, um, so I've got just standard 12 volts. Then I installed this receptacle. This is the big Minn Kota receptacle. Um, I put that next to it. Now that's wired to my trolling motor batteries um, that I've got right down here. So here's my trolling motor batteries, uh, two simple Super Start O'Reilly deep cycle. I've got my, my charger in there. Uh, there's a circuit breaker in there. I've got the foot pedal for the trolling motor, which I'm not going to use right now. But everything's wired up in there, and so that's where that receptacle runs to. So, so that's, that's the electrical setup. Um, so as far as this bracket, let's, let's look at that next. So this bracket, you can see right here. So this is pretty, pretty heavy duty bracket. And this, this was what I had sent back. Um, the one I'd had was basically exactly the same, but it was about five inches shorter. It only came to about right there. And th the reason I had to send it back was two reasons. Number one, this slant right here is, is, is more, um, it's not tight like that. Like it would be on maybe a bass boat or something like that. So you hang over this, top of this deck and you still got, I don't know what that is, a good three or four inches until you get to the rub rail. So I ended up having to overhang this a little bit and the other bracket that I had just didn't have the strength to do that nor the length because I would have only ended up with four bolts. So what this allowed me to do is I've got two, four, six bolts in it. And then these two um, are just capped and you can kind of see, I don't know if you can see that underneath there, they're, they're nice and flush. And so, and again, from the manufacturer, they've said, you know, use this type if you've got a, a, a slope right here that's too big. So that's what I sent that back and got, um, got that all secured. It also has a thicker base so it can support this overhang. Um, but the point of this thing is, and see if I can get it to work from down here, is that this allows you to slide this thing forward in my, uh, my cables and things get hung, but you can slide this forward. There, that's about as far as it goes, maybe another inch, but it slides all the way out and then you can drop the trolling motor down. But you see how you've got such a huge overhang here, right? I go running into a dock and bam, I break my thing. So what this is designed to do is when this, if this hits something, if I've got it out and it hits something, or when I get done with it, I just simply push it back and now for the most part, you can see it's all inside the rub rail, right? So if I hit anything, it's going to hit the boat here and not this. Um, that's the theory anyway. So, and then this is detachable. If I pull this out there, so you can see there's a couple wing nuts back here on the back. I don't know if you can see that. There's a couple wing nuts. Yeah, a couple wing nuts on the back right there. These can come out and then this whole thing just slides right out and then I could take it off. So now there's not a lock or anything on it, but you know, I keep it in this enclosed store. So I'm not super worried about, you know, necessarily having to have a lock. Maybe you can see those a little bit better there and you can kind of see the mechanism of how it slides through there. So, so that's the, the bracket and that's from a company called Shuttle Slide. And this is the 12 inch UHD. This is their, the biggest, baddest one that they've got. So. So that's, that's the trolling motor. Oh, I, let me do the last thing is this transducer. So the transducer for the Hummingbird I've got mounted here. This is just a, a standard trolling motor transducer mount that I've got wrapped on there. And I, think, I guess the big thing that I did here was um, you can see the cable I've got. I've got it wrapped around this thing. And so th these are some brackets I bought from uh, a company called Cornfield Crappie. And so it, what it really amounts to is this bracket that, uh, that tightens over th this knob right here, holds this thing out. And this is basically an air hose. And you can kind of see that it's been split. You run the transducer hose all the way up that. And then this gives you the flexibility when, when this motor starts to spin around and around and around, it won't 
bind up your transducer cable and lock it up. I, I still need to twist that, untwist that a little bit better. And so you see that runs all the way up to here to another bracket um, where that transducer cable comes out and then you can just run it and then I'll run it into the hummingbird. So now I guess the last thing I'll note here is, you know, this boat, you know, I, I think, you know, like I said, it had a trolling motor um, receptacle on there, but it's not exactly super trolling motor friendly. Uh, the rail back there was one of my big problems now. Um, the, this new mount was thick enough and tall enough that I actually was able to get over. You can see I was able, able to get over that, right? So now that's not going to hit that rail. And then I, I have this twist tie, you can see right there, that I'll just wrap around that just secure it just so it doesn't, you know, bounce up and down. Um, but that's it. I mean, it's, it, it is in the cabin, so that's not ideal. But if I'm out here fishing, I, I don't care, right? This is not a cruiser. Uh, or a cruising type setup, you know, if I'm going to do that, I can just simply um, take those wing nuts off and take the trolling motor off and just leave it here, right? That That's the nicest part about that because it's, you know, with the receptacle, I can just undo the plug there. The hummingbird will always be taken down and put back somewhere. Um, but if I, if I am anchor fishing um, and I'm not using the trolling motor, this, it's, I mean, yes, it's a little bit in the way, but you know, it's, it's no more in the way than all the other crap that I've got out on the boat during that. And you can kind of see here, I mean, I, this is where I would usually have um, maybe one of my rods. It's not going to be in the way of that. I can easily get to that. And, and this rod holder and the rest of it is going to be fine. So so that's, that's the setup. And I guess the only other thing here, so the, here's, the, here's the Minn Kota um, compass. So this is for the iPilot. Um, and this is what this does is um, uh, it, it's a it's it's just really a compass reading, and you can see that arrow on the front, and that works with the uh, the spot lock anchor. So when you when you say hold this position, it needs to know okay I know where I am, but I need to know where the front of your boat is pointing, and so you just I just mounted that right here, and that's just running underneath um, and connected into the um, to the, my power bank into the standard accessory. So. So that's it. You know, all, all the wiring is done. I really didn't have to do much at all, except for right under here, underneath the, the helm. Um, didn't have to really drill a whole lot more holes back here. There's just a tiny little hole right there where that cable goes underneath it. Um, and then, of course, the, the few holes for the receptacles and then the six holes for the bracket. But um, it is on. It is ready to go. Uh, and as soon as it stops raining here, um, hopefully maybe tomorrow I can get it out get it down, do any calibrations that I need to do, uh, make sure the, the transducer is set right. I'm sure that'll take me a, a couple tries. Check out the spot lock. Um, I've got the remote. Let's, uh, let me grab the remote real quick. Show you that. So here's the iPilot remote. Um, that I'll be using, you know, it's got a nice lanyard on it. So that's what I'll use instead of the foot pedal. Um, you can see there's not, I mean, not like it couldn't, I couldn't have a foot pedal up there, but I'm not going to be staying, I'm not going to walk up onto the front of the boat just to control it. And the cable's long enough that I could get it back, I guess, down in here to work on it. But again, I don't want that in my way. Um, you know, talk about just having that in the way. That's not that bad in the way. Having a foot pedal down here definitely would be. So, but I got the remote and that's what it's for. So I'll just use that. Uh, to control my 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 path and speed, um, and that's it. I think I am done. I'm sure I'll find something that I have to tweak or, or change once I get out there. But I've, I've taken it through the motions back and forth, extend it back. I've had to you know kind of change some of the brackets just a little bit to make sure everything fits. You know I got to make sure that this knob, this height adjust knob, is up, or otherwise it catches here. So I've got a bunch of little things that I've got to remember. But all in all. Um, I think it's good to go. And like I said, I, I, I didn't have any, I wouldn't say I had major problems. There was just the bracket was different size. And then of course, you know, getting up underneath the front of the boat to secure those bolts was a mess. I had to lay down and back myself up under there. It was very, very tight. Uh, but I got all that uh, done. So really nothing major that I, that I can say went wrong other than just it took a little bit longer, a lot longer than I had hoped. So, you know, wrong electrical connections, didn't have this type of terminal, needed that type of terminal, needed different heat shrink or, or whatever it was. You know, there's always a little something and you gotta run back and forth to the hardware store. So, 
But all in all, it's in, it's done, my power is good, the trolling motor is on, I'm very secure, and I'm looking forward to hopefully this rain it starts up again here. Uh, hopefully I can get out tomorrow and test this thing out. So, all right, we'll see ya. Oh, baby, too much attention, not enough attention.